Hi, it's Kylie Koo. Welcome to my studio and welcome to the Art and Soul Studio Facebook group August Challenge or Prompt, which is Summer Art. And one of the things that says summer to me is bunting. So today I'm going to show you how I make bunting from one sheet of 12 by 12 uh, paper. You, I've used a sheet from a paper stack, but you could use any paper from this and it doesn't have to be this size. This is just the size that I'm using. So along my 12 by 12 sheet, I'm marking at four inches and eight inches. Then I'm turning the other way and marking again at four inches and eight inches. And then I'm just going to draw, use the ruler to draw in those pencil lines. So I'm going all the way around each side, I'll mark four and eight, and then I'll connect the lines into a series of squares. So yeah, I decided to do bunting because bunting to me says summer. You know, we have all the gala days that go on in the early stages of summer, and then there's summer fates, etc. But bunting isn't just about summer. To me, you can have bunting at any time of the year. So if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, and you're going through winter just now, there's no reason why you couldn't make winter bunting or think ahead to the summer weather that will be coming to you. So I'm just keeping this bit on normal speed just to show you how I'm doing it. So I'll end up with a grid that has nine squares. And the good thing about doing it on a piece of paper that's already patterned is that one side will already have a design on it, so I don't need to do something on that side. So now along each of the squares I'm going to mark the middle point. So that will be 2, 6 and 10 inches. Then what I'm going to do, sorry I'm just trying to make sure that I get this in screen so you can see it. What I'm then going to do is to go from the corner of that box to that midpoint and mark. So draw the line from there. And I'll put this line in a little bit heavier just so you can see it. And because I'm doing it in pencil, all pencil lines can be rubbed out afterwards. Now there may be other ways to mark up the sheets. I just found this uh, one of the easiest ways. So going along to the next box on my grid and doing exactly the same. Now as I say, these could be made any size at all. I just decided that this would be quite a good size and you know, you get a decent number. I think you can get at least 15 out of one sheet of 12 by 12 paper. There are little pieces that come off the end but you could actually join them up too and make some more of the little kind of pennants. So, one, two, three, four, five I'll get from that top line. And I'm just marking the bit to actually show where the five come from. And I'll do that for the next two sets of boxes on my sheet of paper as well. So again, I'll mark it two, I'll mark it six, and I'll mark it 10. And again, I'll draw all the lines in on the, di the diagonal. I don't know why I was moving my ruler about there. I think I was just looking at whether there was another way to do it, but I decided to keep it straightforward and just do it this way. Now 
Now I was thinking this would be quite good for one of our swaps in the Facebook group. We did a swap a couple of months ago of postcards and as I started to do this I thought this would be quite a good swap as well. Now I am not going to do a bunting of 15 pieces, I'm just going to do five pieces and I think for our Facebook group swap that would be quite a good number as well. 15 is quite a lot to do but you know it's the type of thing you could do for other swaps as well if you wanted. So there we go, I've got my second group of five marked in. And I'll do that now for the last one off camera. And you'll see I put a line in the wrong place there, obviously lost focus for a second. So I'm now just going to cut this into strips. I got this handy little rotary cutter recently for anyone in the UK, although I think you have these shops elsewhere as well, it was from Aldi's and I have to say I am really pleased with it. I say Aldi, some say Aldi. I still manage to cut a little bit offline sometimes but you know, all in all, I do not too bad. So there I've cut, cut off that first strip, now I'll just do the second. And I'll have the three strips then. Now on each strip I'm going to cut along the diagonal lines. I didn't quite get that off there. I was going to tear it and then I thought no nope, because that's the sure and certain way that I'll end up tearing the bit that I don't want. So I just snipped it with my scissors. As I say, I've kept this piece just on normal speed, just so it makes it a little bit clearer what I'm doing, but later on I will speed it up when I'm actually decorating. Now, I often try not to be too precise with some of the things that I'm doing, but, you know, I thought something like this, it'd be good to kind of have them more or less the same size and shape. So, doing it this way, I pretty much got that. Again, I just hadn't pressed hard enough on that. Still getting used to this cutter. So there we go, from the first strip I have my five pieces. Two pieces from the end and they could actually be put together with a bit of tape once I work out the way that they go. There we go, I've got it now. You could actually tape those two together to make another piece or they could be used if you wanted to put backing onto something, they could be used as kind of backing. So again, off camera, I'm just going to do the other two strips. So I now have 15 pieces patterned on one side and plain on the other. But as I say, all I'm going to do is I'm going to use five pieces today. And I'll use the others at another point and perhaps as part of our swap 
in the Art and Soul Studio Facebook group. And now all I'm going to do is to rub out those lines. So of course these can be decorated in any way at all. I'm just going to use my little gel plate to get me started. And I've put this bit on double speed. So I'm just going to use these kind of colours as a base for all of them. I'm going to roll it out. I was trying not to put the paint on too thick because I want as far as possible not to get paint on the back and if I put it on too much I tend to uh, get it everywhere. And uh, because of this good summer weather that we've had, the paint was actually drying in really quickly. My studio was very hot, so the paint was drying in quickly. I put it on a little bit thicker here. And I'm really trying carefully today not to get it on the back. There's little bits and pieces going, but uh, not too bad. Normally I end up with it everywhere. And I'm just going to go along the five doing that. So that's my five done so far. I decided that I would then just take the roller and roll a bit more on. The colours had kind of become a little bit blended, so I just wanted a little bit of distinction between the two. So just using my roller, filling one or two of the white gaps, although I wasn't too concerned about little bits of white showing through. So I've decided to take a few contrasting colours uh, just by way of other decoration and I want to put a slightly different colour on each of the little individual banners. And again just using my gel plate really just as a, a kind of palette. Trying to get the excess off so that they don't mix too much but again if they mix it's not a problem. And I'm just using a piece of bubble wrap and I'm just going to go over each of the pennants with a different colour. Now it does leave me a bit of excess paint each time, but that's just going to go down onto that little piece of paper which will act as a, a drop sheet and can be used for something in future. That colour just couldn't wait to get out of the tube there. It was jumping out. So there I have it. The five now have a bit of bubble wrap print on it. So I was then thinking what else do I want to put on this? Uh, and I thought I'll do a bit of stamping but I'll put it onto a book page. And then I thought the other thing that kind of brings summer to mind for me is travel. So I took these little uh, Tim Holtz mini stamps and tried to get five that kind of represented travel in, in some way or another. Uh, thought this was quite good. I'm not going travelling this summer. I don't have any plans for a holiday, vacation anywhere, but uh, I can still think about travel and dream about travel. So I used a little balloon, the car, I think I stamped that a second time because I wasn't sure that it was clear. A motorbike. And I'm just going to put a different one on each little banner. Got this one, it's like a stamp with an aeroplane on it. And then I'm just using the back of my Stays On Ink just as a little stamping block. Again, wasn't too happy with that one, so I stamp it again. And then 
I used the globe. I couldn't find it, I was looking everywhere for it and there it was stuck at the top. And all I'm going to do now, I'll roughly cut them out and then I'm just going to kind of cut it a little bit closer to the shape. I still want some of the text showing though. I'll then go round each one with the stays on ink. I then decided that uh, they needed a little bit more added to them, so I used some black paint, watered it down, and just did some splatters. All of that just for added interest. Gave them a dry at that point and then decided if they had black splatters then they also needed some white splatters. And I have to say that the black t-shirt I had on also had white splatters on it by the end of this. So another dry, just making sure that's fully dry before I go on to the next stage. So next I went round each little banner with the stays on ink as well. I then use just a glue stick to uh, adhere each of my little stamped pieces. And I could see that these were really starting to take shape. So for speed I just used my little label maker to make some words for each banner. And again I just used the glue stick to put those in place. Then decided to use a white pen just to do a bit of faux stitching around the edges of each banner. Already gone round each one just with a kind of sketchy black line. I thought that just helped to kind of finish them off. I then attached them to a piece of hessian ribbon and I simply used a stapler to do so. Now there's different ways to, to attach them you, and you could attach them to, to anything, to ribbon, to string, to twine. Uh, I just had this to hand. And you know there's ways you could fold them over, you could punch holes, holes in, thread something through. But I felt this was the simplest way to do it at that time. And I'm just leaving, I don't know, half an inch to three quarters of an inch uh, between each one. You could put them right up against each other but I just decided this was the way that I wanted to do it. So if you'd be interested in participating in our swap then come and join us in the Art and Soul Studio Facebook group. I will put the link in the description box below. Uh, I co-host that group with Diana from the channel Artfully Yours with Diana. So once my bunting was completed, I decided that I would hang it in my little summer house that's in my garden. And uh, in days, days when I'm sitting in there reading or 
painting or just looking out and contemplating the world, I can sit and look at my bunting and think about the travel and the adventures to come. So I'll show you a few images of that bunting then hanging up in each individual piece. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you enjoy meeting, making some bunting and uh, yes, thanks for joining me and thanks for watching. Bye for now.